Hello, hello, and welcome to Rickety Ski Reviews. My name's Elliot, and today we're gonna talk about something a little bit different. So one thing I've noticed from kind of following ski content over the years, back when I worked at Ski Racing Magazine, I had to follow a lot of ski creators, and since then, the algorithms just kind of kept feeding me these ski content creators. But what I wanna talk about today is this thing that I've seen where a lot of content creators will be sponsored, will be sent free product, and they won't disclose it. They won't say, hey, this gear was provided to me by the manufacturer. Hey, I have this relationship with them. Hey, I'm working with an advertiser. And to me, that's really slimy. So I'm gonna be the content ski patrol. We're gonna roll through and kind of call out the bad actors. And there's a lot of them. Now these ski influencers are all over the place. And Instagram, I think, is one of the worst actors. But right now we're on YouTube. So let's start with YouTube and then we'll work our way to Instagram if we have time at the end. Maybe that'll be its own section. So as the content ski patrol, the first person I wanna talk about is Steep Steep. Now if you're not familiar with him, Steep Steep is one of the biggest ski YouTubers out there. He has some of the cleanest edits, some of the best content. He really does a good job. He's a Canadian skier, I believe, but we're gonna talk about him because he had a piece of content that I watched. He had the video called The Controversial Truth About Dope Snow. Now I've watched this once before, we're gonna watch it again, but this one really rubbed me the wrong way. Just to give you some back, Montec and Dope Snow are ski and snowboard jacket companies that have a pretty bad reputation for being fast fashion, for kind of being an influencer brand, and he makes this whole video to explain their background, but what he doesn't tell you is that he is sponsored <laughs> by Dope Snow and Montec. He is a skier on their circuit, like on their team, and he doesn't disclose that until like partway through the video, and then he also has a thing about it in the comments. If you are riding for this team, why on earth would you be the one to make content about how it's actually a really great company? He also doesn't even scratch the surface about it being fast fashion. This, this one actually made me angry. So we're gonna watch it together today, but I just wanted to give you some background. He is talking about how Montec and Dope Snow are these really good companies and how they get a bad rep, but he, what he like really glazes over is that, oh, he's actually being paid to run the circuit with them. He's provided clothes by them. They also fly him out to France. It's like all these different things that just make you go, at what point did you think, maybe this isn't ethical to do, but without further ado, let's jump right into it. So this video may take a while. It's gonna be an editing nightmare. This is a long video and I'm gonna to have to cut through, but we're gonna do it for the people, okay? I hate seeing content like this where it's kind of manufactured to make it look like authentic content when it's really kind of just an elaborate advertisement for the company. You know, the company is paying him behind the scenes or providing him with trips, providing him with gear, but you'll see, here we go. Hello. If you've been to a ski or snowboard resort recently, chances are you've seen one of these jackets. Over the last few years, Montec and Dilp have rapidly expanded around the world. It's getting to the point now where you are pretty much guaranteed to see one of these brands when you visit your local resort. At face value, Dilp and Montec seem like any other popular outerwear brand, but below the surface lies a core full of controversy. Oh my God. You see them a lot because it's cheap. I see a lot of cheap brands out there. I get why people don't want to spend $400 on a jacket. Just because you see it doesn't mean that it's important or a good brand. There's a reason the comments are clowning on it. We gotta keep going, okay. Founded in 2006, Swedish brothers Emil and Linus created an online store for sports equipment. They called it Ride Store. From motocross gear to snowboard jackets, local Europeans could purchase what they wanted and have it shipped to their doorsteps within weeks. This was a massive innovation. Okay, this was my first red flag. When I saw this and it was talking, oh, the founding brothers, and this is where their shop was. It's like, wow, this guy knows a lot about the starting of this company and why is that super important? for the early 2000s. But instead of trying to follow that e-commerce path and become the Amazon of sports gear, Emil and Linus took a different approach. They compiled the praises and complaints about the products that were already listed on their website and used this customer feedback to create their own line of jackets and snow pants. Dose. We, they decided not to be the Amazon. They weren't gonna be money hungry people. They were gonna take everyone's critique and take it into account and make nice stuff. That's what everybody does. What do you think Amazon does with its user data? I hate Amazon. It's like the company I hate the most, but this is a terrible argument. Like, it's just like they did what literally every e commerce seller does. Stone and Montec were born. 
like any startup, Montech and Dope went through the trials and tribulations of creating a new business, but eventually they started to produce jackets and snow pants that did pique the interests of skiers and snowboarders around Europe. Fast forward a few years later and the two brands became some of the most represented out of wear on the European slopes. Now this is like saying plastic grocery bags are some of the most represented out there. It's like, yeah, they pollute the planet and they're free and they're everywhere. <laughs> You see a lot of dope snow Montec? It's because it's cheap and it's easy to get in people's hands, not because it's a good quality product. This is some pretty impressive dancing around real issues. Now, Ride Store's ability to rapidly grow its market share was simply a function of the good value its products provided. Montec and Dope offered outerwear that was the good value, it's because it's cheap. <laughs> You see, they really exploited their workers and really pinched every penny. And because of that, they could give it to people for really cheap. So good value, no? It's like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> He's basically conflating a good value where you buy something that's well made and it's gonna last you a lot of years and being like, well, it's really cheap. So even if it only lasts a couple years, good value, gross functional and stylish in the eyes of an average rider, all at a price that didn't break your checking account. Did the waterproofing compete with Arteryx offerings at the time? Dude, not even close. But you didn't have to sell a kidney to buy a Montag jacket. No. He's got a point about Arteryx. That stuff is very expensive and I have had a hard time differentiating it from North Face, Patagonia, anything like that. Um, the other thing I'll say is that I've only had a couple of friends that had Montec and Dope Snow jackets. Take that with a grain of salt, I've not owned one, but I've done a lot of research into this video on customer reviews, Reddit posts, subreddits, r skiing, things like that. Had personal friends that own this jacket and then like had to get rid of it because it really did not hold up, especially in the East Coast. I've seen a lot of East Coast skiers that basically had to either pack so many layers inside of it and over it that the jacket was useless, or they just, I don't know, they, they had to kind of get rid of it and upgrade it. I think for a lot of people, it's a good temporary fix if you need a jacket in a pinch and you don't have a lot of money on hand, but it always comes back around because you end up getting rid of it. So, you know, how much money did you save in the long term? It's a good short term fix, but just so you know, I don't like have a Montec jacket in the back that I'm using. I don't, I choose not to use this kind of stuff because one, it's unethical. Two, it's like fast fashion. Three, I don't like the quarter zip. That's a whole other spiel. And four, I don't want my ski day to be ruined by bad gear. I told you I use snowboarding gear because it's well made, but I also try to buy nice stuff so I'm not replacing it all the time. I've talked about if you're on a budget, you can buy used Patagonia like fleeces, things like that. And then if they rip or something, you can send them in and get them repaired. I'm a big advocate for that kind of thing, for nice products and ethical products. And this like, strikes out in both of those ways. But let's keep going with Steep Steep. Fast forward to today. Dope and Montec are not only some of the most popular outerwear brands in Europe, but in the world. They managed to capture a large chunk of the Western market and have recently begun selling in Australia, New Zealand, and Japan, all while massively growing their social media presence. But even though Ride Store's sales were increasing, it doesn't mean its sentiment across the entire ski and snowboard industry was improving. People hate on the quality of the products, saying it only lasts for five days out of the season, or that Montec and Dove don't support real snowboarders. Okay, that's not what they were saying. They were saying that it's only for people who ski five year, days out of the year. It wasn't saying that the jacket only lasts for five days out of the year. You're straw manning their argument, and they had a good argument. Hold your horses. Gin Belter Yoda fires back, saying Ride Store's gear is quality and not some ripoff sh from wherever. And I mean, AJD2700 goes as far as saying some of Montex designs are sweet. But Kubo's not putting up with that garbage. These brands are just for Instagram and TikTok people, not real snowboarders and skiers. And H Dubs goes even further. Just yesterday, he saw the ugliest Dove snow kit of all time. And Gems is convinced. Dope and Montex are the the equivalent of a wealthy white girl who drives a Jeep Wrangler on 37s. Ugh, alas, 89 Flight Club says I should buy it. It's not Gore-Tex quality, but it's no different than middle tier gear from any big name brand. Conflicted with the contract. This guy is taking like really serious issues and going off of Reddit comments with five upvotes. He's basically taking a weaker version of the argument. These are really valid arguments as to why you shouldn't buy these jackets, that they're not sustainable, that they're not gonna like last you long enough in the year that you can use it one all year or multiple years. These are really good arguments and he's just kind of 
breezing by them. Controversy, I flew to Sweden to visit the Ride Story HQ for myself and get some answers. Okay, did you pay for that trip to Sweden? Again, this is the part he doesn't disclose where he's like on the team for Dope Snow. Like, he rides for them, so. This is like free advertising for this company. That is zip up your life, disappear and act, you miss up for life. You ought to know I got a trick up my sleeve. Do spot on my sock, metal in the back like Christopher Reeves. Understand I got a series of drama, so I keep me a gun. Roll up a Dutch and marry Juana with you. <laughs> We're here with a sheesh. Okay, anyone who's worked for a real company knows what a bunch of BS this is. Oh my gosh, can you believe it? There's ping pong! Dude, every like, anybody who's worked at a tech company knows, one, the, the ping pong is a bunch of baloney. They just put it out there so it looks good for the optics. If somebody was actually out there playing ping pong, they're gonna like get called into their manager's office. So, tip for any of you guys new to the workplace, don't actually use the ping pong table to trap. Secondly, like, oh my gosh, see? Real company, ping pong. He's the head of R&D. How long have you been working at Ride Store? Um, one and a half year now. Tell us about the process of trying to source a fabric for a fleece, for a jacket. Yes. From start to finish, do I go and I go into the rainforest and find some <laughs> plant or? So a lot of it is really weak. Go into the rainforest and find some plant. This guy's like an expert and he's like actually pretty insightful. I don't know, it's cringy. It's like a teenager. I don't know, he looks so bored while this guy talks. We, we always start with a problem. What mm -hmm. are you trying to solve? Mm -hmm. And it's not just about uh, making something look super cool because aesthetics are very important. Yeah. But at the same time, like it's more about durability. It's more about quality. It's more about sustainability. We were trying to figure out what... Sustainability, you guys... This isn't a sustainable brand. Are you talking about like financial sustainability? Also, Ashish, it looks like... This looks like a spare bedroom in someone's house where it's just full of stuff. You, you knew this guy was coming, you didn't want to organize this at all? Whatever, I don't care. Is the biggest problem which many times uh, skiers and snowboarders have is the freedom of movement. Right. So here, this is a four-way stretch fabric. It okay, Ashish has a good point. The movement is a problem. A lot of ski companies took a really long time to figure out that people need kind of open movement. What you also need is the ability to stay dry and warm. Okay. It stretches in every direction. Mm -hmm. That leads to the ability to be able to move yeah. around. So oh. essentially you're saying you actually put a lot of time, money, and effort yes. to finding good fabrics. And, and this was our own <laughs> custom development. Oh, this is, yeah. so this isn't this is, sourced from any no, other jacket? Yeah, this wow. is our own product, which we are very proud of. Okay, this is what we call a leading question. When I worked at ski racing, if there was like a point that you're trying to get across, you like rephrase the question to kind of line them up. It's also something lawyers do. It's something you do when you're like, have a marketing image in mind going into this. Can I, can I yeah. feel it? Is yes, that okay? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you can wear that year round. So, Absolutely, that's. Yeah. You could tell that from feeling it. Are you joking? What a shill, dude. Really? You felt it in your fingers and were like, yeah, you could wear that year round. Come on, come on. And I can tell from looking at it, you can't wear it year round. Yeah, maybe in like Mammoth Mountain or one of those warmer areas, but come on. Let's be honest. Freestyle and park skiers, while they do, they're on the mountain and everything. A lot of times they're doing that one area, they're hiking up and going back down. The people that like are the big mountain skiers, those are the guys you should be asking about jackets. There's another YouTuber who also talked about Dope Snow Montec and he had a much better approach. Maybe I'll review him to kind of contrast it later. But just going like this, that's not gonna tell you. <laughs> gross, that's so gross. Great. Compare that to this. Like, you can feel like that's more, that's more thick and yeah. it's stiffer. Whereas this is lighter and more malleable. Ashish then led us on a field trip around the headquarters. He showed off some of the fabrics and insulations currently being used in the Dove Snow lineup. He told us about the difficulties of sourcing pre-made industry materials. Specifically, say you want to source a material like Gore-Tex. It's durable, breathable, and has incredible waterproofing, but it's extremely expensive. And this is problematic for... Yeah, because they have IP protections. They have patents. That's the whole point. Also, if you want to know how Gore-Tex works, I can give you kind of a simple explanation if you've ever wondered. Gore-Tex works in that it has small holes in it called these pores. And what it does is the pores are small enough 
that water droplets can't come through, or at least not easily, right? It like prevents the water droplets from kind of breaking the surface, but they're there and they're small enough that the water vapor, not liquid form water, but you know, gaseous air can evaporate out. So it not only allows you to like keep the rain out, if you've ever had a really thick rain jacket, you know you kind of sweat in it. The Gore-Tex allows that moisture to evaporate out through the other side. It's cool technology and there's a reason <laughs> Patented because it works well. Ride store because they price their jackets on the lower end of the spectrum. So instead, Ride store is shifting towards creating their. They're cheap. Their own proprietary fabrics, like the ones used in the current Legacy and Blizzard jacket. While this process is still more resource intensive at the start, Sheesh is confident it's what makes sense in the long run. And given Ride Store's growing scale, they're able to increase their reinvestment. So that's pretty sick. Very very cool to see that. Anyone who's had a cheap jacket knows that like. It, cut, it protects from water like initially. It's the downpour that eventually it starts to leak through. In depth, kind of ins and outs of what you guys are doing here. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Steve. Pleasure. Yeah. We also got to link up with one of Ride Store's garment technicians, Nina. She walked us through the process of turning an idea to a 3D design and eventually a real life piece of outerwear. So, how long does it take to take? this get it into a 3d format on average would you say how long does it take you um usually with a couple of iterations because it, it it usually goes through oh let's change this and let's add that which is the beauty of 3d but let's say i put 20 to 30 hours until we actually get to this stage for one jacket yeah how long do you think it takes to design a jacket also, this jacket, if you look in the bottom left, this is like a jacket that every company has made 10, 20 years ago. It's like the most basic, basic cut for a jacket. There's nothing original about that. Wow. Oh, this is sick. This is the new Legacy front zip jacket in the flesh. It was the jacket that Nina was showing us in her models. It's currently still in development and they're looking for your input, so let them know. It's a four pocket jacket. It looks like something you would get at a gas station. It's fine. It's not that bad, I guess, but it's fine. It's like the most nothing jacket I've ever seen. Do you like it or do you not like it? I've been here, you said, for about three and a half years. What would you say is one of the biggest things you've learned working for this company, working for a ride store? To never be happy, to always pursue <laughs> the next step and improvement. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. So you don't like being comfortable? No. I can tell that from your mouse. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now that's just scratching the surface of all the people. Anyone else think this is like so not charming and so uncomfortable? We got to talk with, but it was clear all of them shared the same common theme. They love their job. A lot of them talked about how Ride Store gives them the flexibility to change and take risks. Take Linia, for example. She was one of the brains behind Ride Store's Renew program, an initiative where customers can purchase refurbished Montec and Dope products at a discount. While this program could have been shut down during its beginning years, given its failure to add to the company's bottom line, they didn't see a lot of traction. Ride Store still continued to support Support Linia and her team's vision, and recently they've started to see a lot of growth. Is it used actively? Is a lot of people actually engaging in buying renewed products versus new? Yes, they are. If I would like a guesstimate, yeah. I think we sold about like could it be like eleven thousand item this this wow. season. From uh so it doesn't need to go into a landfill. That's a good idea, but everybody else does it, and you know why they do it? Because then they can make money on the purchase twice. You understand what I mean? They don't have to make a whole new jacket. They'll buy it from you, give you like a 30% coupon, maybe give you half of the value, and then they sell it. It's like, it's very profitable, but it's not out of the kindness of their heart. <laughs> okay, that would be like what Patagonia has with a repair program. This is like, hey, we can double dip on profits for one product, sign me up. <laughs> And it's like easy inventory, maybe the cleaning is hard, but I've worked with fulfillment services and taking returns and refurbished products. I know how this all works and this is like meant to be altruistic the way it's framed, but barely. You know why they're doing that is because they're making the money rather than people selling it used to one another, right? It kind of cuts them in on the deal. It's like a very basic thing that everybody does that's kind of good for the environment, but probably would happen aftermarket on eBay or something anyway. Anyway. Purely for, renewed products. From renewed products. Wow. While the quality and sustainability of Ride Store's products seem to check out, it still leaves Kubo's point unaddressed. I mean, do real skiers and snowboarders even wear Montec and dope snow gear? That's such a disingenuous way of approaching this question. Like, clearly, 
anyone who's a real skier can ski on Montek, right? Like the, what the comment is getting at is saying that people that spend a lot of time on the mountain aren't really using Montek or dope snow because quality isn't there, right? If you need to keep the moisture out or you need to be able to have it dry or keep you warm, these jackets are pretty thin. So <laughs> it's not saying like, oh, well, real skiers don't use this. It's, you know, it's not very articulate, but you're in the comment section. What do you want? <laughs> Cool, man on rail, wear dope snow. Dope snow for a real skier. It's like, yeah, we get it. You know what though, that dude could have worn a hoodie. He could have been wearing a costume. That's not the point. The point is, does this product last? Does it hold up? It's not ethically made. It's not durable. It is kind of a low tier product. And trying to say like, well, if somebody goes on the rail, then it's a real deal. I don't know, it's like, it's it, it's such a pointless shot. It was like, he just wanted to kind of shoehorn in some of these rails. And it's like, they're trying to make the point that like, somebody who spends a lot of time in the snow and in cold conditions, this jacket will hold up. Like, could you imagine if you were in the East Coast where it's like 40 degrees below zero, and you go, hey, does this jacket really hold up? Dude, I went on the rail out here. It's like, that's not the point. That's not what they asked. It's so disingenuous to make that. I don't, I don't get what the point of that whole rail shot was. Now, obviously, Jesper is a rare breed of NAR. Given what this guy has thrown, it's more likely he's a fake homo sapien than a real one, further confirming Kubo's point. But on the other hand, I've had the privilege of skiing with so many other athletes on the Dove team this year, and considering I've seen them eat, swim, sleep, and throw down, I can reasonably conclude they are, in fact, real individuals. They are real skiers and real snowboarders. They can cork. I'm keeping it real. Cool, so they can do some tricks. What does that have to do? This man took one comment about saying like, real skiers don't use this jacket and taking that and running like th past the goal line with it. Yes, we get you have friends that use it. We get that you're on the team. And and God, and when he said, I ride with the Montec Dope Snow team, it's like, oh, so you're just sponsored by them? They write you paychecks? The controversial truth about Dope Snow. What, are you, what truth are you gonna tell me? You're on the payroll. This is insane. I have no problem with you having business deals with Dope Snow, Montec, whatever you want to call them. That's fine. Yeah, you know what? Like, get your sponsorship, get paid, do all that. But don't try to hide it as like, well, I'm doing this deep dive journalism on it. And meanwhile, I'm getting paid by them and getting paid for the trip there. It's gross. Am I missing something? What does the comment say? Top comment five months ago. Want to clear the air, the video is in no way sponsored by Dope Snow. While the company brought me to their HQ to meet the team after a shoot in France, this video was my initiative and something I wanted to create. After writing for Dope Snow this season, I grew to love the brand, the product, and the people behind the company. I want to make a video that addressed the unmerited hate the company gets and show off the facts behind the brand. This is the result. Love you all. God. The mental gymnastics on this is insane. This guy, has, has he ever worked for a real company? Yes, there are good people at companies, even if the company stinks, even if the company is unethical, even if the company is making fast fashion, even if it's not making high quality products for low prices to try to undercut everyone. I don't even have that strong of feelings about the company, or at least I didn't prior to this, but going out of your way to say like, this was my initiative and I just love the company so much, it's like, Dude, just because there are good people at the company doesn't mean that it's a good company. Doesn't mean that you should support it with your money. Doesn't mean that it's made ethically. Just because the people at HR at the HQ in Sweden were cool does not make what they're doing good, does not make it good for the sport of skiing, does not make it good for the environment, does not make it good for the human ethics of how we get our, our soft goods. There's a bigger picture here. It's like saying, Oh, well, you know, ExxonMobil is uh, an ethical company because my uncle works there and he's a nice guy. Yes, <laughs> nice people work at these companies making a living, but that doesn't mean that the company is good or that the criticisms that the ski community has of Dope Snow and Montec aren't valid. Also, can we talk about how obnoxious it is for the cameraman to just yell, oh, it's a, that's so annoying. It's a cool trick, I get it. I get the hype. Also, what does any of this have to do with Montec or Dope Snow? There's some really good skiers on it, so it's a good brand. The size of a elbow, so try 
yours parts. And you gon' die trying to wrestle like Owen Hart. Dickhead, young cheek trying to sell them stacks. So I can talk the fuck about the But it's the joke and the money what I'm after. So I'ma start charging up cells like a dancer. I'm not a rapper, really a true rider. And it's not just their athletes that ski and snowboard, their HR department, finance, customer service department, all the other people that encompass Ride Store apparently ride as well. So I went to Tains, France to meet up with some of them and find out whether or not this was actually true. My man, you went all the way to France just to prove that the people in HR snowboard and ski? Yes, that's probably why they work at a ski company. Oh my God. Or a soft goods company, a jacket company, whatever you want to call it. Well, we made it to Tings. Yes, France is very beautiful. What does that have to do with anything? What does it have to do with any of the points that people are making about this company? About it being fast fashion. Oh my God, I can't keep going back to this. Dude, this has nothing to do with anything. Oh, can the company really be evil if it's in a beautiful part of France? Yes. <laughs> France, you can see the sign over there. It says, it says Tings. You can also see Nina over there getting ready, locked and loaded. Nina, did you design this jacket? I didn't, I can't take the honor, but I helped make it. You ready to triple backflip today? Definitely not, but I'm ready to hit the slopes. Go ahead. Is this supposed to be charming? It's not charming, it's, dude, don't talk to her like she's a child, jeez. This is an adult woman. This is like when people think they're more charming than they are. Oh my God, okay. This is really cringy, okay. I'm, I'm gonna stay on track here, I promise. Do you wanna tell us your name and how long you've worked at Ride Store? I'm Isa, and I work in the buying department, so I make sure that we order jackets for you guys yeah. to buy. I see you're wearing Montec and I'm wearing Dope. Is this is this going to be a problem? It's rivalry. Oh. Yeah. What's your name and how long you've worked at Ride Store? Uh, so I'm Charlotte. I've been at Ride Store since December. I'm marketing campaign lead. So yeah. Is this weird? Am I weird? I This feels weird. Okay. Yes, there are good people that work at these companies. It doesn't mean that the practices aren't bad. I mean, people need a paycheck. Okay. Yeah, working, working with all the social guys and yeah. Do you think the green and the brown will do well on social media? 100%. Are you just saying that? No. <laughs> Pete! Everybody knows Pete! Ready to blast? Oh, I'm hyped. The weather is insane. <laughs> bang, bang, here we go. Okay, the other thing, the other point he's trying to make is that Montec and Dope Snow are not fast fashion. He's had like three different jackets on so far. You don't need three different jackets if they're good quality jackets. It's like further proving the point that people were making with their criticisms of Montec and Dope Snow. No! <laughs> Let's go! First try, baby! Woo! We got a natural half pipe in front of us. You gonna rip? Let's go, baby! <laughs> Try and keep up. I'll get after it, buddy. Big pop in. Does anyone find like the way he's talking to these people a little condescending? Is that just me? Oh, big coming out with the tail top, baby! <laughs> Grab it, safety, no gloves. Let's go, baby! Well done, boss. No us. Heavy, and my legs. Heavy. Also, can I just say for the record, I hate being called boss, chief, stuff like that. Speaking of being condescending. Anyway, it has nothing to do with the video, but I just wanted to point that out. Ugh, makes my skin crawl. How you doing, big guy? How you doing, chief? Ugh. Don't. Ugh. Anyway. Have you too? All right, we're posted up with Julian. He knows how to ski properly, and he's going to hit some jumps, yeah? I'll try to. Okay. Like no, nothing. Nothing. Nothing good. too crazy. We no, go no. mellow today. Oh, Lord. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Full on straight good backflip right beside somebody. Coming out massive straight air into the last hit here. Oh! Taking the front foot out, that was sick! Woo! I mean, that was sweet skiing. He did almost murk that guy though. Jeez. Can you see before you go on the jump, like, hey, there's somebody coming? I mean, I know that guy shouldn't be on the jump at all, but anyway.
Okay, I haven't watched this video in a while, so I don't remember. I just remember it being really frustrating. Is there more? Is there more to his argument than this? It's just like, how can you hate them? It's great. Look, there's fun skiing. Fun ski times for everyone. Or is that it? I kind of remember this being it, but I swear there was like more argument to be made. How do you think it feels for these people? Like they work in HR, they work in product design, they're working like real jobs. And this guy who is on payroll just shows up and like sticks a camera in their face. It's gotta be a little weird, right? Being like, I'm pretty sure this guy makes more than me and I'm actually making stuff in the company. I don't know, I don't know what the pay looks like, but I would find this like very weird. So what's it been like for me riding for this company over the last ski season? Oh, it's been real nice. You can have your opinion about their products, but their employees, the people that encompass RideStore are some of the most genuine. What's it been like being on ExxonMobil's payroll? Oh, it's been real nice, brother. The check's always clear. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's nice. That doesn't make what they're doing right. Curious and selfless people I have ever met. When I flew to Austria for Rebel Play Streets last February, my ski bay got lost in transit, meaning I didn't have a jacket or snow pants to wear while I was riding the course. So I let one of the community managers at Dope know about this, and he literally drove 90 minutes each way just to purely drop off a jacket and snow pants for me to wear as well. What's the point of that story? I made this guy working for the company drive three hours round trip because I don't know how to remember my jacket. What an embarrassing thing. Also, do they not sell Montec at this venue? This story is not as relatable as you think it is. I am completely unaware of travel and don't pack a jacket. Or did you pack a better jacket because it was gonna be cold, huh? Oh, I, well, I actually was wearing my Arcteryx and realized that it wouldn't look good in the photo shoot. <laughs> Dude, this guy is so out of touch. I, this is, I can't believe this video was made. I honestly can't. I can't believe that no one in this guy's circle maybe watched it before he published it. This is insane to me. All his goggles, a face mask, a beanie, everything I needed to rent the course. I mean, I could have done it in shorts and a t-shirt. It was Rebel Play Street, so I was gonna ski it either way. <laughs> Dude, it was, it was a wild event, but still, it might just be a 90 minute drive to you or three hours both ways, but. What an insulting thing to say for the guy that drove three hours. Well, yeah, I didn't really need the jacket, but look, he brought me all this stuff. Are you that self-centered? Like that you would say, hey, thanks for driving three hours, but I didn't need this stuff anyway. You could, and you also edit these, right? So you could have cut that out. You didn't even think about it. You didn't even think of these people as people. You just said, oh, well, I forgot stuff. Yuck, yuck, yuck. And, uh, oh, they brought it to me, but I didn't really even need it. Aren't they swell? I have a hard time with sometimes people in skiing being really like disconnected from reality. And this is like a really good example. I like this guy's videos. I like his edits, but this video is so out of touch in my opinion. The fact that somebody did that out of their own goodwill just to drop off a kit for me to wear. Dude, come on. Love you, Pete. Now with the spotlight on Dobes. Did you have goodwill out of like contractual obligation, out of like a marketing standpoint? Oh, this guy who has a lot of followers, we need to get him a jacket. Did he really do it out of the kindness of his heart? Because if, like, if you were just trying to help someone, he could have just Venmoed you and you could have gotten a jacket off the rack. This wasn't about goodwill. This was about getting the company's product on you and in front of cameras. Well, dude, the logic here. No, I, I think personally the brand has come such a far away from the bulky and loudly branded jackets they were making, you know, even five years ago. The current line of jackets and snow pants that are on the Dope Snow website have seen drastic improvements. And this gear is something that the entire production team is genuinely proud to showcase because they all had a material piece in creating it. This was very- This is all corporate speak. Like somebody sent him an email and this is the lingo he's using. I, if you've worked in corporate America, you can smell it a mile away. Secondly, like just saying that the graphics and colors have upgraded does not address the real concerns. Yeah, I'm sure in the last five years the jackets have improved somewhat. I'm sure that the designs are more modern, but that doesn't get at people's point of it being fast fashion and being made in sweatshops. And I know other brands make things in sweatshops. I'm not just trying to pick on dope snow, but this is like a whole marketing campaign wrapped into a video and pretending to be kind of a genuine piece about the company. It's not, you're on payroll with them. You are a sponsored skier by them. They're providing you travel and products. This should have just been on their marketing team. This is like very seedy in how it's trying to pretend to be an unbiased review of the company. 
and while addressing none of the actual arguments and just filling with fluff pieces. Very clear when Ashish was talking to me about one single fabric for 30 minutes with a smile from ear to ear on his face the entire time. This man loves his fabric. And in my experience over this last ski season, you know, keep in mind I'm biased, I, I ride for dope, but personally I've seen them continue to invest and in Keep in mind the bias, you're gonna bring that up at 14 minutes and 19 seconds. You have a minute left and you just kinda say, and by the way, there's some bias, but don't worry about that. Look at these kind-hearted people and look at my Instagram shots. Addressing bias is like talking about the real thing and saying like, hey, you know, take this with a grain of salt. I'm on payroll, I get products. But yeah, you know what I mean? Like, level with us. Don't just try to like sneak it in there and then distract with something else. Support real life skiers and snowboarders, amazing individuals and athletes. Plus, they're starting to collaborate a lot more with local companies like Jibworks to put on jam sessions for the public, which is a really cool initiative. But at the end of the day, does this guy not know how marketing works? Yes, they put on and sponsor these events to get their name out there. It's not just out of like goodwill. Branding, style, it's all subjective. Some people simply don't like the name Dope Snow and don't like how the outerwear looks. And I can respect that, you know, your style is your style. But per People aren't attacking the style. I mean, I'm sure, oh my God. And they're not talking about the name Dope Snow. Nobody cares about that either. They're saying it's cheaply made, fast fashion, and you address none of those. Oh, I get why people, you know, everybody's got their style, am I right, guys? It's like, no. Personally, for me, I genuinely love their products. You know, I love the colorways Dope offers. I like the fit of their jackets and pants, the look and feel of their fabrics, and the more subtle branding that we're starting to see rolled out in newer product lines, I'm, I'm a big fan of. And subjectivity aside, look at, the, look at the facts. Let me get this straight. His argument for being objective, he's like, oh, yeah, that's subjective, your taste and style, but you can't, deny that this is a good price. This is the this is the most insane argument I've ever seen. Okay, let's break that down. You're saying that you, let's be objective. You can't get a jacket for $200, isn't that amazing? You know who else does that? Sheen. Okay, it's $200, but if I'm gonna only have it for a season, then it's not worth it, right? If I pay 400 for a Patagonia and I get four years out of it per year, that's a better value, okay? Secondly, that's not people's complaint. People aren't complaining that it's too expensive. No one's arguing with you that it's cheap. The argument is that how they get it cheap is by getting it at the cheapest material, latching on to fast fashion trends to sell more product. And you talked about sustainability. They're just selling used clothing. That's not, I mean, it's kind of sustainable, but they're doing it for their own bottom line. Are they doing any repairs? Can I send my Montec in for repair like I can Patagonia? That is sustainability. That's really going out of your way to keep things out of a landfill. Not just saying, oh, well, it's $200. Also, you know what else is $200? Like every jacket, if you get it in the off season. I got my Volcom Gore-Tex jacket for $190 because I got it in the off season. And Volcom actually makes their stuff ethically. They have like a whole thing. Is it as good as Patagonia? No, but I'm working on a budget. I got it for less than $200. And it's way nicer guaranteed than any of this stuff. It's frustrating to hand wave real concerns with totally bogus counterpoints. In other words, regardless of what you think of the styling, Dope and Montec offer one of the best value propositions out of any outerwear brand on the market right now. Some of the best bane for your buck outerwear, if you will. And that, that's my opinion. I, I mean, I, like I laid out all the facts for you guys to interpret, to, to create your own opinion. Value? Dude, I've seen you wear now four jackets. Okay? You've worn four different jackets. What kind of value is that? Honestly, the value... The value, if it only lasts a couple years, it doesn't have real Gore-Tex, it doesn't actually hold up in the cold conditions. You wanna show to me that this is a really good product? Take it up to rural Vermont. Take it up to somewhere that gets real extreme conditions and wear it. And just wear their products. Don't, you know, pad it out with some real like nice smart wool stuff or something from Patagonia. Really, is this that high of a quality product? Or are you someone in the park who doesn't really see those kind of conditions? And then insult the audience and say, well, <laughs> I laid out all the facts for you. You can do whatever opinion you want, but I've got the facts. It's like, dude, the fact is that there's valid critiques of this jacket and this video did nothing to help. It was not ethically made because you're on the payroll for this company. It, the arguments made zero sense. Like, oh, but it's cheap. Yeah, so, so is stuff from Walmart. <laughs> you know, so is a grocery bag. If I put that on me, does that make it a good value? No. <laughs>
<laughs> this is this is the most insane level of like almost like corporate bootlicking. I hate to use that term, but if you like your Montec and Dope Snow jackets, that's awesome. If they work well for you and you think it's a good value, that's awesome. Acknowledge that you're paid by this company. Acknowledge that they flew you out and make some real arguments. The arguments you made were, well, they're nice people, they're cheap jackets, and they're stylish. And they went out of their way for me. That's the, that's the problem with like influencer marketing. It's like, it, it, it's so self-righteous and disconnected from the real world. It's frustrating. I'm not super familiar with Steve Steve. I've watched like a couple of his videos. He has some really clean edits. He does a good job with his content. I, You know what I mean? Like credit where it's due, but this was the most insulting, self-serving video I've ever watched. This guy's videos are fine. He does a good job with his edits. Skiing looks good. I've got no critique there. My critique is more that you're hand-waving valid arguments about unsustainable production of soft goods with Montec and Dope Snow. And you're basically hand-waving that away saying like, well, it's cheap and the people are cool. It's like not a very mature way to argue things. Now, the guy seems fine. He, he does some weird things that make me uncomfortable, but who knows, maybe that's just me. But it's like, if you're gonna talk about a company, start out by talking about your biases, say, hey, I'm paid by them, I'm giving product. You know, lay it all out on the table, maybe mark it as an ad, it feels like an ad, and then go from there and say, but you know what, the product actually holds up pretty well, here's me testing it. You know, like, go through a real consumer experience. I, I've never even, like, owned the jackets, I've just had friends that own them or seen them and kind of heard read through subreddits, I did a little bit of research prior to this. The overwhelming sentiment that I've seen is that it's cheaply made, fast fashion. If you like the stuff, that's awesome. I'm not talking specifically about whether or not you should like this jacket or whether or not you should even like this company. The only reason I even brought this up is because somebody asked me about Steep Steep in the comments and I said, listen, I don't know him that well, but what I've seen, it really soiled my opinion on the guy. The other videos I saw look great. Like I think he's a very talented skier and videographer and everything he puts together looks really clean but saying, oh, can you really be mad? Look at this sweet 180. It's really insulting and really disconnected from reality. It's cool to see the space expand. I've talked about how like snowboarding has influenced ski culture and how positive I think that is. There's some cool stuff there. That's my opinion of Steep Steep. I'll try to watch more of his content. Maybe I'll get a better opinion of him from watching that, but this was pretty gross. This did not need to be made and uh, the ethics of it are questionable at best. As always, I really appreciate everyone watching. I also wanted to celebrate. We just hit 500 subscribers, which is very cool. Thank you. I'm really like, I just feel humbled that people even want to watch my stuff. The fact that 500 of you are subscribed really makes me feel good. And I just want to say thank you. I appreciate it. And more than anything, thank you for just watching the video. That's awesome. As always, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.